It was an ordinary weekday night. I found myself alone at home, seeking solace in a cup of coffee as I toiled away in my room, engrossed in work. The looming deadline pressed on, and this late-night endeavor promised to ease the burden of the week ahead. At my desk, laptop aglow, I persisted, my focus undeterred despite the creeping fatigue. Suddenly, a muffled thud reverberated from downstairs, jolting me from my concentration. My gaze darted towards the doorway, the source of the disturbance. Rationalizing that the inclement weather outside likely birthed these unsettling sounds, I returned to my work, dismissing it as the mere creaking of a rain-soaked abode. However, a second thump punctuated the silence, demanding my attention once more. I rose and descended the stairs, a house cloaked in darkness. Patiently, I waited, hoping to trace the origin of the disconcerting noise, eager to dispel any inkling of a potential threat. Still, fatigued and assured of my safety, I eventually ascended the stairs. Vigilantly lingering for what was likely an innocuous anomaly seemed a futile expenditure of time. Resuming my work, I maintained my vigilance for another hour and a half, hearing naught but the occasional creaks of the old structure. As the clock neared 1 o'clock a.m., I was on the verge of wrapping up my tasks when a resounding thud, more pronounced than the previous ones, emanated from below. This time, concern tinged my fatigue. I hastened to the staircase, my trepidation mounting, yet the lower floor yielded no sign of intruders. Descending a few steps, I peered over the railing, but the once vibrant rain now seemed but a distant murmur. This was more than mere weather-induced acoustics. An uneasy realization began to settle in. Restless and apprehensive, I returned to my room, perplexed but unwilling to accept the possibility of a genuine threat. Seated at my desk, I barely had a moment's respite before yet another thud reverberated through the house, this time echoing from the very hall outside my chamber. My eyes darted to the partially ajar door, and within seconds, a figure strode past it. Time seemed to hang suspended as shock coursed through me. The footsteps led to one of the spare bedrooms, suggesting that the intruder was unaware of my presence. Swiftly, I locked my door, my heart pounding in my chest. Abruptly, the steps halted, replaced by the ominous resonance of pounding against my door. Subsequently, I discerned what sounded like a forceful assault, as if the intruder were determined to breach the barrier. In that precarious moment, I grasped a pair of scissors from my desk, my mind racing through the options. Though dialing 911 was a possibility, fear gripped me, the dread of imminent danger overpowering my rationale. The relentless pounding ceased, replaced by heavy breathing, sending shivers down my spine. Then, footsteps receded down the stairs. I seized my phone, dialing 911. As the intruder's presence waned through the lower corridors, a door closed, likely the back exit, and the house fell eerily silent. The police arrived swiftly, a mere two or three minutes later. Just as a fresh wave of anxiety washed over me, I heard hurried footsteps fleeing the premises, perhaps by shutting the door behind him. The intruder aimed to deceive me into thinking he had departed. Though shaken, I mustered the courage to summon the authorities. Yet by the time they arrived, the intruder had vanished without a trace. The lingering questions haunt me, a specter in the shadows of my thoughts. The motives of this trespasser remain an enigma. Investigators lean towards the theory that he infiltrated the premises earlier, possibly during my absence, lying in wait until the cover of nightfall. His intentions, however, remain shrouded in uncertainty. The unsettling truth remains. He is out there, a looming presence, capable of revisiting terror upon me or another unsuspecting victim. His elusive presence embodies an unsettling riddle, a riddle that may never find its resolution. I embarked on a lengthy return journey from my vacation, a drive that stretched over a grueling 16 hours. My determination was set on reaching home in one continuous push, bypassing the need for a hotel stay. As the sun began its descent, the weariness in my eyes became palpable. 
I valiantly fought off drowsiness with the aid of snacks I had packed, but their efficacy waned over time. I knew a respite was imperative, if not to merely steal an hour's rest, then perhaps to surrender to slumber until dawn. The desolate road stretched out before me, bereft of any signs of civilization. I zoomed out on my map, hoping to pinpoint a nearby hamlet. Regrettably, the only semblance of civilization was an hour's drive away. Doubt gnawed at me. Could I make it safely? Minutes ticked by, but the answer crystallized. It was a risk I couldn't take. A flicker of hope emerged in the form of a gas station sign, half a mile down the highway. I veered off the main road and arrived at an eerie junction. This lone outpost sat at an intersection, with two forsaken roads leading into the unknown. The main building stood in darkness, its lights extinguished. The gas pumps, however, still hummed with a dim, inviting glow. It seemed the station operated unmanned overnight, a realization that unsettled me. Positioning my car on the side, I spent the next five minutes surveying the surroundings, vigilant yet reassured by the lack of activity. No vehicles approached for fuel, nor did any pass by on the road. It was an isolated, uncanny enclave, to be sure, but not a threatening one. Reclining my seat to its furthest extent, I powered down the engine and surrendered to the embrace of sleep. The moment I awoke, a murky disorientation clouded my senses. The clock read 2 o'clock a.m., though the reason for my awakening remained elusive. Then a metallic clatter echoed from outside. My gaze fixed upon the gas station's core, where a figure manipulated one of the pumps. Unfortunately, my view was obstructed by the pump itself, revealing little of his actions. What I did not observe, however, was a vehicle of his own, neither in the parking area nor by the pumps. Surveying the desolation anew, it became evident that I was stranded in an isolated pocket of the world. The man continued his cryptic task, eventually turning and striding toward the road. Minutes passed, and I assumed he had vanished. Still, his inexplicable conduct weighed heavily on my mind. Fatigue dragged me back into slumber, but it was a fleeting respite. The clamor that jolted me awake emanated from my vehicle. Panic coursed through me as I beheld a man peering through the window adjacent to mine, his eyes locked onto mine. He feverishly attempted to breach my sanctuary. Paralyzed, I grappled with uncertainty. Did he know I was within, or was the glare obscuring his view? Abruptly, the man pivoted, and I witnessed him collecting an object from the side of the gas station. Swiftly, I ignited the engine, propelling my car in reverse. The man brandished a menacing metal pipe, his gaze fixated on me as I fled the scene. My heart pounded in my chest, a relentless drumbeat accompanying me throughout the remaining journey. What malevolent intent lay behind the man's actions remains a chilling mystery. The circumstances, however, etched an indelible mark of terror, underscoring the peril I narrowly escaped. I maintain a rigorous work schedule, laboring four days a week through night shifts that span a daunting 10 to 12 hours. This demands a diurnal reprieve for slumber, leaving me with the unconventional challenge of being nocturnally active four days a week. Over time, I found that deviating from this rhythm on my days off led to poor sleep quality and a pervasive sense of fatigue. Consequently, I resolved to adhere to this nocturnal routine consistently. My days unfolded with a habitual cadence. I'd retire to bed around noon, rousing at 8 o'clock p.m., while the adjustment proved initially taxing, necessity underscored the endeavor. As the months passed, the rhythm became bearable, a calculated concession for the demands of my profession. On a recent day off, I stirred at 9 o'clock p.m., embarking on a morning ritual of breakfast and household chores. A run was next on the agenda, a regular fixture in my days of respite. Just shy of midnight, I ventured out. The forest preserve adjoining my abode served as the chosen route, a circuitous path that I traversed multiple times until satiated. Familiarity bred comfort, and I settled into the rhythm of the trail. Yet, on this particular night, a disconcerting anomaly emerged. Amidst the serene expanse, 
a man materialized along the path, initially a distant silhouette. A casual observer, I assumed, until our proximity revealed a curious stillness. Clad in dark attire, his gaze affixed to mine, he tracked my approach with a disconcerting focus. A shiver of unease coursed through me as I passed, only to glance back and find him rooted in place. A disquieting foreboding washed over me, lingering for minutes before I recommenced my route, looping around again. This time, he was nowhere to be found. A knot of uncertainty tightened within me, contemplating the man's abrupt presence and vanishing act. The prospect of him venturing into the woods seemed unlikely, as the exit lay on the far side from his position. No encounter ensued, leaving me with a curious disquiet that led me to curtail my run prematurely, hastening my return home. Exiting the forest, I navigated through the residential streets, arriving at my doorstep. A gulp of water and a moment's respite later, a sudden sound emanated just beyond my front door. The lateness of the hour negated any expectation of visitors. Approaching cautiously, I peered through the peephole, a chill seizing me as I recognized the dark-clad figure from the preserve. My stomach clenched in dread, observing him poised on my porch. Devoid of any attempt to knock or announce his presence, I stood in silent vigil for what felt like an eternity, absorbing the disconcerting tableau. The minutes stretched on, my heart racing while the intruder maintained his eerie vigil. A queasy sensation settled in my gut, the realization that this man had evidently trailed me home and was behaving far from conventionally. Retreating to my kitchen, I dialed 911 in hushed urgency, recounting the unsettling presence looming outside my abode. When I returned to the door, the figure remained steadfast, unmoved by the impending arrival of law enforcement. He betrayed no outward signs of alarm or agitation, merely surveying his surroundings with a detached nonchalance. Even when the patrol car arrived, he held his ground, steadfastly evading any semblance of explanation for his disconcerting presence. To my dismay, the police were constrained by the fact that he hadn't technically committed any offense. His disconcerting behavior, while indicative of a potential threat, did not provide legal grounds for apprehension. It left me unsettled, grappling with the ambiguity of the situation. The motives behind this stranger's unwarranted pursuit and his unsettling vigil outside my residence remain an enigma. With his erratic comportment, I can't help but entertain the grim possibility that he harbored sinister intentions. The lingering unease and unanswered questions are a haunting specter, a chilling reminder of the potential danger that lurks beyond my threshold. Thank you for watching Whispering Tales TV, so don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join our community of fellow thrill seekers. Get ready for spine-tingling stories that will keep you up at night. Let the Whispering Tales begin.